So for this question, we have a 4 kilogram ball and the attached light rod rotating in the vertical plane about the fixed axis O. If the assembly is released from rest at theta is 0 degrees and moves under the action of the 60 newton force, which is maintained normal to the rod, determine the velocity of the ball as theta approaches 90 degrees and we're going to treat the ball as a particle. So I guess the first thing um, is to think about what your initial and your final position of your system is going to be because we're going to have to apply the work energy equation which looks at what happens between the two different points. So our initial position is we're told it's released from rest at theta equals zero degrees so that means it's going to be in the horizontal position and we're looking at the ball um, until it gets um, to theta equaling 90 degrees um, and that's the position of interest where we're trying to find the velocity. So that's going to be our final position. So when theta is equal to 90 degrees, theta is measured in here, it means that the rod is going to be um, in the vertical position. All right. So just scrolling down now, I have drawn that exact um, situation. So our final position again is the vertical one. Our initial position is when it's in the horizontal one. And we know this angle in here is going to be 90 degrees from the rotation. All right. So we're going to be looking at the work energy equation. Um, so writing it out, we know that it's equal to the change in energy, um, which is the work applied minus the work lost. All right. So the change in energy, we're going to look at it between the final and the initial position. And this is the way I prefer to do it rather than looking at each individual energy type. So the change in energy is going to be E final minus E initial. All right, so then we need to think about if we have an applied force, and this time we have. So we have this 60 Newton force, um, which is external to the system. It's not happening internally. So that extra force is going to create um, some extra energy in the system. And so it's going to go into this work applied term. So we can't cancel that one out, it's got to stay. Um, however, with the work lost, um, we're not going to consider friction or air resistance in this question. So under that assumption, that means that we have no losses um, that we need to include. So that becomes our equation. So now it's just a case of working out what each piece of the equation is. Um, and I'm going to just work through each term individually. So starting with the final, We know it's going to be possibly made up of each of the three different parts of energy. All right, so at the final position, we're looking for what the velocity of the ball is at that point. So if we're looking for a velocity, that means that we are going to have kinetic energy. So I'm going to rewrite this as a half mv squared. All right, next up is potential energy due to gravity. And remember that this is relative to the reference point that you select. So I think in this question, it makes the most sense to set your reference point as being in line with the final position or in line with that pivot point. So I'm going to call this my zero height mark or my height datum and measure all my heights from here. So if I'm measuring from here at the final position, I am going to have some height above that zero height mark. So I am going to have to include potential energy due to gravity. All right, and the last term is potential energy due to the springs. And we don't have a spring in our system, so that's pretty easy to get rid of. So substituting into this equation. Now we're told up above that the mass of our ball is 4 kilograms. So we can put that in, multiplied by the velocity squared. And that's what we're going to be trying to solve for. 4 times 9.8 times the height. So in the question again, we were told this dimension here is 300 millimeters. So that's going to be the height of the ball's center of gravity. And putting it into meters, it becomes 0 0.3. Okay, so you can simplify this to become 2v squared plus 11.76. All right. So next we need to look at what's happening with the initial energy in our system. All right. So scrolling this down a little bit, we know that the initial energy, 
again has to be made up of kinetic energy, potential energy due to gravity, and potential energy due to any springs. All right. So potential energy, sorry, kinetic energy um, is going to be zero because we're told this thing is released from rest up at the top in the question. So if it's at rest, that means it's got no velocity. It means it has no kinetic energy. So this term here is zero. Potential energy due to gravity. Um, remember, it's measured relative to our reference point, which we've said is in line with the pivot. And coincidentally, uh, our ball is going to be in line with that pivot as well at the initial position. So the height of the ball is zero. That means that the potential energy due to gravity is zero. And again, we have no springs. So this becomes zero as well. And overall, we're going to have zero joules at our initial position. All right. So one left, and that's to work out what our work applied is. So I'll just scroll this up a little bit again. So work applied can be calculated as the force multiplied by the distance over which it acts. So in this case, we have a consistent 60 Newton force, um, which is applied perpendicular to the rod the whole way round. So if we were to plot the distance over which it acts, it's going to be like a half circle as this rod rotates. Okay, so this here is your distance d. So we can calculate the work applied. It's going to be 60 Newtons multiplied. This is like essentially a quarter of a circle. So equation for... Um, circumference of a circle is 2 pi r and we're going to need to divide by 4 because it's only a quarter of that circle okay so the radius we can work out of this circle it's going to be the same as this 200 millimeters in here again we're going to convert it into meters to keep the units all nice all right so it's going to become 60 times 2 pi times 0.2 on 4 and this works out to be 18.85 joules. All right, so the final step of this question is just to substitute the three terms we found out, um, sorry, back into our original equation up here. So the final is 2v squared plus 11.76 minus the initial, which we said was zero. And it's equal to the work applied, which is 18.85. So the only unknown in this equation is the velocity. So solving for it. You can work it out to be 1.88 meters per second. So that's going to be the velocity that the ball is traveling at the final position when that rod is actually vertical. All right, so that's all for that. Um, see you in the next one.